Oh my God, we're back again with yet another three row midsize SUV video. And of course, you can't have one of those without this thing. The Kia Telluride. Kia Telluride. Kia Telluride. Every time I'm tempted to talk about the Telluride. The Telluride. Telluride. I have to put a dollar in this thing, but that one didn't count. First one's free. We love the Kia Telluride. It's been perched atop our mid-sized three-row SUV rankings for quite some time now, and it took home our Edmunds Top Rated Award for best overall SUV as well. But in such a popular segment, new challengers are always arriving. And today we've got three other vehicles that are either brand new or got serious recent updates, all aimed at toppling the Kia from its perch atop the mountain. They are the Volkswagen Atlas, Toyota Grand Highlander, and the Honda Pilot. Here at Edmunds, we give these vehicles overall ratings, but that's not the only thing that we score. We also score them on different categories, things like interior comfort, technology, and how they drive. The Telluride has an overall rating of 8.4, which is the best in this group, and that's mostly because it's good at just about everything. But good doesn't mean that it's the best in every individual category. So what we've done is taken four categories that we think are important to shoppers in this segment, and we're gonna see which of these vehicles is the best in each individual category. The four categories are interior and comfort, technology and safety, cargo storage, and finally, value and fuel economy. But before we go on, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. And for more information about any of these vehicles, check out the links in the description or head over to edmunds.com. We'll kick things off with interior and comfort. Now, these are two things that we usually score separately on the Edmunds rating, but for today, I've combined them into one category, taken the average for each vehicle, and lined them up to see which one comes out on top. Here's how they shook out. Not a lot of separation between these four vehicles for this category, only a half point difference between the Telluride on top and the Pilot down on the bottom. But I'm here in our winner, the Kia Telluride, and it definitely stands out among this group. When you climb into the Telluride, it just feels different. There's a big step up in quality here compared to these other vehicles, from the materials to the layout. It feels like a near luxury vehicle for a definitely non-luxury price. We love the buttons and how simple it is to find everything that you need. Also simple is the infotainment system, but that's something we'll get into a little bit later. Each of these door openings very large, so it's very easy to get in and out of the Telluride, and it has a pretty good third row, although I will say that the Atlas still probably has the best third row in this class, thanks to how roomy it is. The Telluride also comes with a ton of features. It has heated and ventilated seats across the first and second rows. The Grand Highlander's interior, also nice and comes close. We like the third row of that vehicle much more than the one you get in the regular Highlander because that one is so small and cramped, it's basically relegated to kid duty. The Pilot's third row is smaller than the other vehicles here and it has less features overall, so it can't really compete. One thing that we do like though, these little releases on the second row seats that make it easy to get in and out. The Telluride also stands out for its ride quality. On the road, it does a really good job of soaking up imperfections and keeping the cabin quiet. Our next category is meant to encapsulate two things, in-car multimedia and advanced driver aids, both of which fall under the umbrella of technology. Three of these vehicles have large, crystal clear, modern infotainment screens. And then there's the Pilot. Bruh. Each of these vehicles comes with pretty similar safety features. They all have standard adaptive cruise control with lane keep assist, and each of them offers a surround view camera. So we grade them all pretty similarly on that front. Here's how the results shook out. Our winner in this category is the Grand Highlander, and it comes with this very nice standard 12.3 inch touchscreen, as well as wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Spread across the cabin are USB charging ports for all three rows, and we also like Toyota's native navigation. The navigation system here actually integrates the results from Google, so if you search for something, you can see its star rating and get additional info like the phone number all through the native navigation. We also like that Toyota has upgraded its voice command, so now you can actually use natural speech and tell the vehicle to turn it off and turn on functions, all with your voice. The safety aids on this vehicle all work as advertised. We think it does a particularly good job of keeping the vehicle centered in its lane when driving down the highway using the adaptive cruise control. And we like the variety of views that you get with the surround view camera. Why screen? Why are you sized like you're from 2010? Why does the Honda Accord get Google integration and a large screen and you are here? Why, 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 why? Also, the pilot's advanced driver aids 
not quite as dialed in as the rest of these vehicles. When you're going down the highway, the lane centering kind of ping pongs you to the left and right, and the forward collision warnings are a bit too sensitive. Here in the Telluride, a very nice, simple, easy to use infotainment system, but there are two things that really hold it back versus the Grand Highlander. The Grand Highlander's native navigation is much better than this vehicle, and the Telluride only has wired Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, so no wireless connectivity for either of those here in the Kia. The Atlas's refresh was supposed to improve its technology, but instead it's taken a step forward and a step back. This screen is larger and better, but it's also adopted the interface that we had in our long-term ID4, and we didn't really like that. That would include these touch capacitive controls right below the screen. And the problem with these controls is not only that they're capacitive and not quite sensitive enough, the other problem is they're not illuminated at night. So you can't actually easily change the temperature or volume once the sun goes down and that's not good. The other problem with putting all these controls right here below the screen is that if you're going to use the screen, you will naturally put a finger down here to maybe help balance your hand as you're using it. And every time you do that, you're gonna accidentally activate one of those touch capacitive buttons. It's fun, real fun. Anyone buying a vehicle this large is probably planning to carry a bunch of people or a bunch of stuff, or even a bunch of people and their stuff. That's why our third category is cargo and storage. And it doesn't just cover this area behind the second and third rows. We also take into account interior storage, so useful cubbies and storage spaces. And we also measure for car seats, how easy they are to install, how easy they are to take out, that kind of stuff. Now, I don't have any kids, so it might be helpful to have one here. Anybody have a kid? Anybody have a kid we can borrow? Anybody? The Grand Highlander is our winner in this category, and it's fortunate for Toyota that we brought this one here instead of a regular Highlander, because for the last few generations, that vehicle has been too small for those who plan to use the third row or the cargo area frequently. A problem that Toyota remedied by building this vehicle, which is the size that the regular Highlander probably should have been all along. The Grand Highlander has 20.6 cubic feet of cargo space behind its third row, and that's roughly on par with what you're going to get in the Telluride and the Atlas. But if you fold down the third row and the second row, that expands it to 97.5 cubic feet of cargo room, and that figure is class leading. It's not only the cargo area that gives the Grand Highlander the win in this category, it's also plenty of useful storage spaces spread throughout the cabin. Starting up front here, you have this nice bin in the dashboard for the passenger, and in front of the shifter, another large storage space, and this center console, also pretty big as well. Also, at each of the four doors, you're going to find pretty large door pockets, and for the third row, each of those passengers gets two cup holders and even a spot to put your phone. We also like the Telluride's cargo area. It has a nicely sized underfloor storage area that can fit a backpack or any other items you'd want to keep hidden. And it also has a unique feature that these other vehicles don't have, and that's these buttons right here which allow you to drop the second row seats from the cargo area. Like this. Nice feature. But up front, again, you're missing the same interior storage that we like so much in the Toyota, so just a little step behind. The Pilot comes in last in this category as well, but there are things about this cargo area that I do like. At 18.6 cubic feet, it's not that much smaller than the others, and just like the Telluride, you get a pretty big underfloor storage compartment. Now, this is only usable if it's like this empty. It's this large because you can actually take out the center seat of the second row and store it back here when you don't need it. So if you want this storage space, you can even leave that seat at home and just have seating for one fewer passenger. Even though all four of these vehicles are pretty good for car seats, the Pilot has the highest car seat accommodation score because it's the only vehicle with three sets of upper and lower lash anchors in the second row, so you can install three seats across. So if you have kids with car seats, you may have to consider the Pilot, even though that screen is dinky. The Atlas and the Telluride tie for second place in this category, and the Atlas does have a pretty large cargo area, just like it has a large third row, but it doesn't quite have the same amount of interior storage as the Toyota has, so it falls slightly behind. One thing the Atlas does that none of these other vehicles do is that you can actually tilt and slide the second row forward, even with a forward-facing car seat installed, provided that it's anchored by the latch anchors and not with the seatbelt. Our fourth and final category, value and fuel economy. Now, fuel economy, 
pretty self-explanatory. These four vehicles actually got pretty similar fuel efficiency numbers. They all got between 22 and 24 MPG on our ratings loop. But value, that is where they start to separate themselves. And that's how we measure things like cabin quality and features for the amount of money you're gonna pay for the vehicle. And we also factor in ownership benefits like scheduled maintenance and of course, how long a vehicle's warranty is. The Telluride wins this category mostly because of its fantastic value proposition. With high quality materials inside and great design, it almost feels like a luxury vehicle and it comes with more features than the other competitors as well. Backing that up is a great 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty, which is the best in the business. And it's also got a 5-year, 60,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty, which is better than most as well. Coming in second is the Toyota, and just behind that is the Atlas. Now, both of these vehicles feature interiors that we do like, but both of them are a step behind the Kia when it comes to fit and finish and overall quality, so this is where they land. What's notable about both of these vehicles is that they do offer free scheduled maintenance. For the Toyota, it's two years or 25,000 miles, and for the Volkswagen, slightly less at two years or 20,000 miles. Bringing up the rear once again in this category is the Honda Pilot. Now the Pilot has a pretty well appointed interior, but the problem is the design already feels very dated and you look at that tiny screen and you don't really feel mad, you're just disappointed. As we mentioned earlier, efficiency isn't a strength for any of these contenders and in Edmunds testing, they all got pretty similar fuel economy results with the Grand Highlander coming in on top at just over 24 MPG. It's also worth mentioning that the Grand Highlander is one of the few vehicles in this segment to also offer a hybrid powertrain. And in this case, it actually offers two of them, both of which will give you better fuel economy than the gas engine. So in the final accounting, that was two category wins for the Telluride and two for the Grand Highlander. And that makes sense because those two vehicles have the two highest Edmunds overall ratings among this group. None of these three vehicles could really dethrone the Telluride, but we think that a new contender that arrives next year may have a real shot. That would be the 2024 Chevrolet Traverse, which got a big redesign of its own. That vehicle has traditionally had tons of cargo and interior room, but it never really had an interior or technology to compete with the top of this segment. That changes next year though, as it gets a new 17.7 inch touchscreen. So next year, there may actually be a shakeup in this class and we'd love to see it. Thanks for watching. Those categories are interior comfort, technology and safety. I don't got it. Cargo still Cargo start. <laughs> oh, had my legs crossed, oops. You're in the Telluride. Ah!